Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It does make a big difference when you do that. So it's been a while, hasn't it? Apologies for the radio silence. I've had a really big project on these last few months, nothing to do with music, but as of three days ago, that's all done and dusted now, so I can get back to making a few of these videos. And the video I wanted to make today is essentially a 101 on these things here. This is a potentiometer, or a pot, as we tend to refer to it in the guitar world. Now, there's two reasons why I wanted to make this video today. Firstly, because I've just been sent these, which are the brand new 280K VI pot. And if you've watched the videos on this channel, you'll know that I was absolutely blown away by the 550k VI pots. So I cannot wait to get these into my guitars. I think they're going to sound absolutely awesome. But the main reason I want to make this video today is because whenever I make a video of guitar mods, I get a lot of questions about these little things. And I think there's a fair bit of misconception floating around about which is the correct pot to use for a certain application. So today I wanted to make this video, which is eight very basic things about guitar pots that it's important to know when choosing the correct pot for the job. Number one, value. And this is the most talked about thing when it comes to choosing pots. Now, historically, there were two values of pots that were found in 99% of guitars. 250k pots, generally in Fender type guitars, and 500k pots, generally in Gibson type guitars. Now, the best way of thinking about it is the higher the number of the pot value, the brighter that pot will sound in your guitar. So the reason why 250k pots were generally used in fenders is because fenders would use very bright single coil pickups. Whereas Gibsons had humbuckers, which were typically more dark sounding. So having a higher valued pot in a Gibson would allow more of those kind of bright, trebly high end frequencies to come through. Now, they're not the only two values of pots that were ever used in guitars. The earliest 1954 Fender Strats, for example, had 100k pots in, which would have really darkened the overall sound of those early Strats. And similarly, the earliest Gretsch Duo Jets had one meg pots in, essentially 1000k, which gave those guitars a really bright, sort of high fidelity sound. Now, you can mix and match pots as well. My Gronland, for example, I've got a 550k pot in the volume and a 280k in the tone. And that combination just seems to really work for that guitar. And also, when it comes to different types of pickup, P90s, for example, technically they're a single coil pickup, but they're a quite sort of a bit darker, more beefy sounding single coil. So you, which pot do you use? For me, I like bright sounding guitars, so I use 500k pots with all my P90s, but a lot of people prefer 250s. The same goes for things like gold foils and vintage spec filtertrons, which have a really glassy sound. Again, I prefer those with 500k pots. A lot of people prefer them with 250s. But you can use any pot with any pickup. I've had comments on this channel before with people saying, I'm gonna put a very high output pick up in my guitar, do I need to change the pots to avoid damaging anything? No, that's not how it works. There's no high voltage in the guitar. You can use any pot with any pickup, but certain pot values will be more suited to certain types of pickup. So you can use any pot with any pickup. It completely depends on how bright or dark you want that pickup to sound. Number two, taper. Now, when it comes to electric guitar pots, there are two types of taper it's most common to find, and one is much more common than the other. The less common one is a linear taper. And what that essentially means is I'm gonna use the example of this pot here being a volume pot in a guitar, okay? So with the volume knob on 10, you get 100% of the guitar's output. Going down to seven, you get 70%. Five, 50%, and so on. So going from 10 down to zero is a completely straight line in terms of how much output you get from the guitar. Now, the more common type of pot to find in an electric guitar is known by two things, a logarithmic taper or an audio taper. They both mean the same thing. And what that essentially means is the path from 10 down to zero in terms of percentage is a curve. So going from 10 to eight, for example, gets rid of about 60, 70% of the guitar's volume. Going from four to two makes very little difference. So that does mean you can make a much bigger difference up the top of the, of the range of the pot and then get into really sort of subtle differences low down. And that is what the sort of classic central labs type taper was in the old sort of late 50s burst Les Pauls. And that's what these VI pots are trying to copy the tape off and they do it incredibly well. So it's very common to find log pots 
in electric guitars because riding the volume control, for example, it's just a much more pleasant musical experience using a log taper. But you can use either in any situation. They will both work absolutely fine. Now, one thing you do have, or what I have to be aware of, is I'm a left-handed guitarist. And when it comes to pots, you can wire them in either direction. So the middle lug is the output and the outside lugs are basically what you blend between as you turn the variable resistor. And what a lot of left-handed guitar manufacturers do is they just wire the pot in reverse so that the knob works in the same direction relative to the guitar as a right-handed guitar. But what that does is it reverses the taper. Now with a linear taper, that's no problem at all because it's a completely straight line. It works exactly the same either way around. The only thing that changes is which way you turn the knob to get to maximum volume, for example. With a log taper, it reverses the taper doing that. And in a lot of left-handed guitars, what you'll find is using the tone knob, for example, nothing really happens until you get down to about two where it's basically an on-off switch. And the reason for that is it's because it's a log taper that's reversed. So nothing really happens until the end and then it shoots up and it doesn't really work in a musical way. So that's something to be aware of. I made a video about this not too long ago. I use standard right-handed pots wired correctly and just use the pot working the other way around because that gives me a complete selection of pots. But if you're a lefty guitarist especially, it's important to be aware that you may have log pots wired in reverse, which is why your tone and volume controls don't work as they should. Number three, tolerance. Now, this pretty much applies to any product that's manufactured ever, but in the world of guitar pots, what that essentially means is if you buy a 500K pot, it can be a certain percentage either side of 500K. So what you'll often see written on product websites is 500K plus or minus 20%. And what that means is your pot could be as low as 400K or as high as 600K. Now the VI pots, the 280K ones, I've just measured them and they came out as 271, 278 and 281. So they're all very consistent within kind of 1% of each other. Whereas other pots can have a much bigger difference. So it's important to bear in mind that buying four 500K pots, you won't be getting four 500K pots. They will all vary. Number four, shaft type. Now there's two things to bear in mind here. Firstly, the difference between a short shaft and a long shaft. Now in my experience, most guitars use short shaft pots, but long shafts are used in things like Gibson Les Pauls because Les Pauls tend to have a very thick carved top on them. So you need the extra length to poke through the top and have the knobs at the correct height. So you don't want to be buying a Les Paul with a short shaft pot because it won't pop through. And likewise, you don't want a long shaft pot in something like a Gibson SG because the knobs will be 10 foot in the air. The second thing to remember is the difference between a split shaft and a solid shaft. So with a split shaft, these, are ten these tend to be used for guitars where the knobs just slide onto the pot and they're held in place on their own. These pots have knurls on them and the knobs have the corresponding knurls. So they just slot on and they stay in place. Whereas the solid shafts are used for things such as fender tellies, where the knob just drops on the top and is then held in place by a screw that bites onto the shaft. So you don't want to buy the wrong one because if you try and put a screw on the split shaft, you'll just crimp it together. And these obviously won't hold any knob in place on their own. So the best way to choose the correct shaft type for your guitar is to just look at what's in there and buy the equivalent. Number five, feel and quality. Now, there's some really key players in the world of guitar electronics, and to be honest, they all make very high quality pots. CTS, Alpha, Borms, Damasio, for example. So you don't have to worry too much if you're going with those guys. But there are sort of cheaper knockoff pots out there that really won't be as well made. So I would say if you're going to buy pots, go with a named brand because they do last and they are a much higher quality. Now, a lot of people do like to say online that bigger pots are much better than the sort of smaller mini pots you can get. Now, in my experience, there is no sonic difference between them. The only difference is the size. So I wouldn't worry if you buy a guitar with mini pots in 
don't think that those pots don't sound good or won't sound as good as a bigger pot. That's not the case at all. Now, when it comes to how a pot feels, this will sound very, very spinal tap, so bear with me here. But when it comes to how a pot feels to use, that is very important. Now, a very good example of uh, difference in feeling are the CTS bare knuckle pots, which are kind of the VI pots equivalent. They're 10% overvalued at 550 and 280K. Now, this guitar here has the CTS 280K pot, in. And there's a good amount of resistance in turning the pot. It's not stiff, but you're not going to knock it and it flick all the way around. So it's a good sort of, you know, there's a nice feel in the pot. I told you it sounds spinal tap. Now, in this guitar, I have the short shaft 550k CTS pots. And there's two things I don't like about the CTS 550s, long and short shaft, but there's two things I don't like about them. Firstly, there is no resistance in that at all. It feels like it's just kind of loose in the base. So if you knock it, you can flick it all the way around from 10 to one and vice versa with one movement. So it's it feels like it's just kind of dangling in the base. And secondly, the, the shaft of the pot should be fixed firmly into the base, which they're not on these. So I don't know if you can hear, it kind of wobbles around a little bit. I don't like that. So for me, the 550K VI pots feel much better made than these uh, CTS 550s. But how a pot feels to use is incredibly important because it's ultimately how you're going to sort of interface with the guitar and control the volume. And if you're anything like me, you're kind of riding the volume knobs all the time. So it's really important to consider how a pot feels to use. So if you're able to, and especially if you're going to be doing a lot of pot swaps going forward, get hold of some pots from different manufacturers and try them out and just see which ones you prefer before committing to putting a certain manufacturer's pot in all of your guitars. Number six, availability. Now this is something that very often gets overlooked, but it is important to consider. Now things such as CTS pots, I think are pretty much globally available. You can get them in any country. Whereas the VI pots, for example, are only really available out of the States. So you need to decide whether it's worth importing a certain type of pot versus something you can get locally. So go to your local guitar shop, see what pots they stock, see what the online retailers in your country stock, but ultimately it may be applicable to import something from overseas. So as I just said, I much prefer the VI pots uh, 550Ks over the CTS ones, which is a little bit frustrating because I have to import them from the States, whereas the um, CTS pots, I just call up bare knuckle pickups, pay them the money and they send them to me the next day. So it's much easier to get hold of those, but ultimately I I prefer the VI pots, so I have to import them. So it's very important to consider what's available locally. And also, if you're going down the route of trying to find vintage Central Labs pots, for example, you won't find them and they'll cost hundreds of pounds or dollars if you do. So is it worth going down that route? Personally, I'd say not, but ultimately you do need to consider the availability of the particular pot, vintage or modern, that you want to use in your guitars. Number seven, measuring. Now this is a very nerdy thing to do and it really isn't necessary, but it does go back to what I was saying about tolerance. Now the only way to know the exact value of a certain pot you're putting in your guitar is to measure it yourself because of the tolerance. And the way to do this is to get something like this. This is an electronics multimeter and you can get these pretty cheap. This is about a tenner on eBay, but they're worth their weight in gold for working out exact pot values. So what I do when I get hold of some new pots is I measure every single pot and write the value on the back. And you can then do very nerdy things like putting exact pots in certain positions on the guitar. So if, for example, you have four 500k pots, all with a bit of tolerance, and you have a twin pickup guitar, and you think the neck pickup sounds a little bit dark and muddy compared to the bridge, you can put the two highest value pots in the volume and tone of the neck, and the lower value in the volume and tone of the bridge, because that will darken the bridge slightly and brighten the neck slightly, and bring them more in line. So as I said, this is a very nerdy thing. It's really not necessary, but if you're someone who's super particular about their tone, knowing exact pot values and choosing which pot goes where can give you some subtle but important results. And finally, number eight, different types. Now in 95% of circumstances, the standard three lug guitar pot will do you absolutely fine. But there are things to consider depending on what you want the pot to do. So if you want to use a humbucker in coil split mode, for example, you'll need something like this. 
a push pull pot and that will give you a lot of different options for wiring it up so that you can split the coil of your humbucker by pulling the knob up. My Dan Electro for example has dual concentric pots in which are essentially two pots stuck together so if you're using something like an old vintage Dan Electro you'll need to buy dual concentric pots and also as I was saying earlier about um, both vintage pots and also mini pots not necessarily being better or worse than big pots you do need to consider with vintage pots that some are absolutely enormous so if you've got a small place to fit the knob into it may be relevant to buy a mini pot or a standard size pot versus something like that. So there are different types of pots out there depending on applications, but in most circumstances, a standard three lug pot will do you absolutely fine. So there we are folks, eight basic things about pots it's important to know when choosing the correct pot for your guitar. Now, as I kind of said in point one, I think, there are no hard and fast rules to any of this. You can use any pot in any position within reason, and it completely comes down to personal preference, how you want that pot to sound in that position in your guitar. You can mix and match, you can play around with values, going up in value will make a guitar typically sound brighter, going down in value will have the opposite effect. But it's completely up to you, there are no rules, you won't damage anything by using a certain value of pot with a high or low output pickup, it's not really how it works. But just play around, get used to kind of experimenting, the kind of 250k for single coils, 500k for humbuckers, is kind of historically how things have been done. And that's a very good starting point, but don't be afraid to experiment. I've got Fender guitars with 500K pots in that sound amazing. And you know, I've got one meg pots in my Gretsch, which sound great. It's fun to experiment. So it completely depends which pot value works for you in your guitar. So thank you for watching folks. If you have any more suggestions about these sort of 101 type videos that you'd like to see me cover the basics of, drop them in the comments below. And if I can make that video, I absolutely will do so. And please do carry on subscribing to this channel as well. It does make a big, big difference when you do that. So thanks folks, it's good to be back and I will see you very soon. Bye-bye.